Thank you so much for this invitation to share with you on this very first Sunday of the new year. It's a real privilege to be part of your service. If you've not met me before, I'm Joth Hunt. I'm one of the regional team for Southern Counties Baptist Association. And can we wish you a very, very happy new year? And we're praying for you, particularly as we go into this new year. I wonder if you've ever considered this page in your Bible. It's the page between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It actually represents about 400 years, but there's nothing written on it. It doesn't mean nothing happened, but during this time, there was a waiting period and many Jews were praying and hoping for the Messiah. And as the page is turned, of course, the next thing that takes place is the birth of Jesus. As we turn our page from 2020 to 2021, I want to, well, I want to take you back to a passage that is part of the nativity narrative and to two characters, Simeon and Anna, and ask the question, what might we learn about these two people who waited through the old and were part of the turning of the page into the new? So the first thing I think is worth mentioning, and it's quite obvious, is that Simeon and Anna were elderly people. Now I use the word elderly rather than old. In our society, when we talk of someone being old, often we begin to devalue that person. But in Jewish society, someone who was elderly was seen to be an elder within society and respected as such. Simeon and Anna were clearly old people elderly people. Simeon, we don't know his age, but uh, we can assume because he says over Jesus, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. So I think we can assume that he's fairly elderly. But Anna, we do know her age. And actually Luke recalls, as often he does in a very pithy way, she was very old and she was 84. These people were people who had experience. I'm fascinated that the nativity story, the coming of Jesus spans the generations. We have another older couple early on, Zachariah and Elizabeth, and the birth of John, of course. And then we have the younger couple, Mary and Joseph. We have the shepherds, we don't really know the age of the shepherds, but they probably spanned a number of different generations. The Magi, Again, we tend to assume that they were experienced people. But then we have Simeon and Anna. These older people found at the temple who are seeking to do the will of God. We, we shouldn't devalue the importance of experience. My mum and dad are well into their 80s and they were often feel feel they don't have the skills for today when it comes to smartphones and uh, iPads and internet connection and YouTube, all these kind of things they, they struggle with. But just because people don't have techni technological know-how doesn't mean that they don't have spiritual experience. Spiritual experience of life, life that has been lived life that has been experienced, life that has been shared with God. And that spiritual experience is so important and so valuable. And I think part of scripture is trying to say to us that the role of Simeon and Anna in this moment, the turning of the epoch, the turning of the years, the turning of the testaments is absolutely crucial because these people have lived with the old and they're entering in to the new. Let's not devalue elderly people. You older folk, don't devalue yourself. You may not understand technology, but you do have the experience of life and you should have the experience of knowing God. And for the rest of us, let's hold on to that important Jewish characteristic that values and respects the older person 
that sees them as the elders within society and listens carefully to what they have to say because often God is speaking through them. The second thing I note about this, this, these two people, in fact, not so much about Simeon, we don't really know about Simeon, but certainly in terms of Anna, is that she was almost definitely incredibly poor. It's recorded for us in, uh, in the passage that she had been a widow. So she was married for seven years and then she had lost her husband. And since that point, she had been a widow. In fact, it goes on to record that she spent the vast majority of her time at the temple. Gets me asking a question. How did she survive for such a long time? Because in her day, a widow would have been one of the poorest people in society. And my only answer, my only conclusion, is that God provided for her needs. That she knew the provision of God as she spent time with God, as she prayed, she discovered that God kept providing for all that she needed. And in that, she gained a wealth of experience of her Heavenly Father. Not a trust in earthly things, which many of us have, but a trust in God who supplies time and time and time again, year after year after year, well into her 80s. God is still providing for this lady. There's something precious about when we don't have. We wouldn't want to pray or encourage anyone into a place of poverty, of course we wouldn't. But one of the gifts of poverty is when we throw ourselves on God and we discover that he is continually faithful. Anna particularly, as she moves from the old to the new, has this experience that God is faithful, God provides. And when God has provided in the past, as we move forward, as we turn the page of 2020 into 2021, we can be reassured that God is faithful and will provide for all that we need. So the third thing that I want to draw out is that Simeon and Anna are both righteous and devout individuals. Simeon is described by Luke as being righteous and devout. He uses those exact terms. Anna isn't so much so, but she is identified as a person of worship, a person of fasting and a person of prayer. Luke uses that term righteous and devout to identify people that are right before God and who God is using and working through. Is almost like the good and the bad. So the bad being King Herod, of course. But those who are good, those who find themselves in righteousness, are those that are working the purposes of God out. And Zechariah and Elizabeth are described as such people. You could argue that Mary and Joseph are part of that category. They're not, they're not described as righteous and devout, but they are described as being honoured, chosen by God. And then Simeon and Anna, two are these elderly pair that are right before God and God is using them to speak into the lives of others. We don't know what Simeon's righteousness and devotion looked like, but we do know what Anna's looked like. We know that Anna was a person of worship and we know that she fasted and we know that she prayed. She loved to pray. Do you know, worship is the foundation of our Christian lives. Those who come to faith, come to faith because God has done something remarkable in their lives. And because of that, it should well up a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of adoration, a heart of praise, where we can declare and say to God, God, you are good, you are good. And Anna, it seems, was such a person who loved to enter into the temple because that's the place they went to worship. And she would enter as an individual, but also corporately with others to raise up her voice, to raise up her heart and to tell God 
you're good and to bring her praise and thanksgiving to God in that way. But she wasn't just a person of worship. She was also a person who wanted to know God better. And that's seen in her desire to fast, which is remarkable really when, when you think that she probably was a very poor person and had very little. But the little that she had, she was prepared to put to one side from time to time and to focus on God. That's what fasting is. It's putting aside the things of the world and focusing on God himself and saying this time, this period is for you. And Anna was such a person. I, I often wonder whether we as Christians need to rediscover the, the spiritual discipline of fasting. Fasting from the TV, fasting from our, our smartphones perhaps, or our computers, or from Zoom. Yeah, amen to that, we might all say. Fasting from food. Fasting, putting aside the things of this world and saying, God, I want to be in your presence, hearing and learning about the things of heaven. So she was a person of worship, she was a person of fasting, but she was also a person of prayer. And prayer is that conversation with God. She wanted to be in conversation with God. And I'm sure she was a person that told God everything that was going on in her, lives, in her life. But prayer isn't just that list. Yes, it's important that we bring a list of, of what's going on in our lives to God. That's, that's okay. God wants to know who we're praying for uh, and what our desires are, what our hopes are, what our dreams are. God wants to know all that. But, but prayer is not just a list that we bring to God. And as we go into 2021, we should not be prayerful people in the sense that we're bringing our list to say, God, this is what we want you to do. Prayer is very much listening to God's list. What have you got to say, God? What is your desires? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? And how can we fit in to what you're doing? It seems to me that Simeon and Anna were such people. And another characteristic of this, this great, these great two people is that they were both people that were full of patience. They were prepared to wait on God for him to fulfill his promises. I'm not particularly a patient person. I like things to happen quickly. And if, if someone has made a promise, well, I like to see the fulfillment of that promise as soon as possible. But in God's time, sometimes we need to learn that we have to wait. His pace may be a lot slower than ours. In scripture, we shouldn't be surprised to find that lots of people have to wait. Noah had to wait. He had to wait for the, the, the waters to recede. Uh, the, Moses had to wait to be sent back to the people of Israel. And the people of Israel in Egypt had to wait for God to bring them out of Egypt into the promised land. David, King David, had to wait some years until he was anointed king of Israel. And the people that were sent into exile had to wait many decades before they were to return to Israel to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. There's a huge amount of waiting that goes on in scripture. And of course, you know, that center page that we were talking about of the New Testament to the Old Testament, that page there is, is really, you could describe that as a page of waiting. And Simeon and Anna are such people. Waiting is often not encouraged as a great spiritual attribute, but I'm beginning to believe that it is. And one of the things that we, we may have learned or we could have learned through 2020 is that when we find ourselves in a place of weakness, when we find ourselves in a place of vulnerability, when we find ourselves in a place of lockdown and restriction, we can learn that there are some things that only God can do. We cannot rush God. God does things at his pace. And we as his followers need to learn to walk at his pace. 
Waiting requires patience, a sense of forbearance. Uh, that's part of the fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? Love, joy, peace, patience, forbearance. And forbearance isn't just forbearing with each other, but also forbearing the circumstances and situations that we find ourselves in. And when we find ourselves in a season of winter, there is a sense of forbearing, of waiting on God to bring the spring. But patience and waiting also requires faithfulness, that we trust God's promises. Simeon and Anna were such people that believed what God had pro promised, believed what God has said, and believed that they would see it. And they did. They saw the Christ child. They saw Jesus Christ. They saw the Messiah, the one who was promised. And they held him in their arms because they were faithful. They placed their faith and trust in God and allowed God to do what only God can do. And so the final thing that I want to share about these two people, and I'm sure there are plenty of other things that we could say, but this is the final one that I want to draw out of this passage, is that these two people, Simeon and Anna, were prophetic. They were prophetic in the sense that God filled them with the Spirit. They spent time listening to God. God revealed his truth to them and they declared that truth to others. If you begin to read Luke, you'll be struck by the number of times he mentions the Holy Spirit. And, and with Simeon particularly, he, he writes this, Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went in to the temple courts. Do you know, three times Luke records for us that this is the move of the Holy Spirit on Simeon's life at this point in time. The, those who are seen to be prophets are those who are filled with the Spirit of God. You only have to do a quick research through Scripture to discover that the, the prophets are those that God anointed by his Holy Spirit. Simeon is such a person. The Spirit of God comes upon him. The Spirit of God reveals truth to him. And the Spirit of God enables him to reveal that truth to others. Anna is similar. It doesn't unpack it in quite the same way, but she is seen to be someone who recognises, she's, she's actually described as a prophet. <laughs> That's worth noting. And she is someone who's seen the truth, understood the truth. And she begins to tell everyone about the Christ child. My prayer is this, that those who follow Jesus will be filled with the Spirit of God as we enter into 2021, as we turn that corner, as we turn the page from 2020 to 2021, may God fill his church again with the Spirit of God. May he reveal his truth into their hearts and souls. May our spirit resonate with God's spirit and may our heart beat with God's heart. And as he does so, may we too speak the truths of God into our society, into our times, and be unashamed of the things that God places in our hearts. May 2021 be a year where the promises and the goodness, the grace and the mercy of God is shown through his church once again. And so in these two people, Simeon and Anna, may we learn so much as they turn the page from, from the old to the new. And as we turn our page from the old year, 2020, into this new year that is to come, 2021, May we learn, may we learn what it is to, to grow old in our experience of God, to become elderly in our experience of him. May we know in whatever poverty we may experience, may we know his provision, providing for all that we need.
May we be known as the ones who are righteous and devout, seeking to be people of worship who wonder and lift up our praise and adoration to God, people of fasting who put aside the things of this world so that we might spend time with God, to be people of prayer, not just bringing our desires and hopes, but actually listening to God's dreams and hopes for the year ahead. And may we be patient, waiting, walking at God's pace, doing things in God's time, allowing God to do what only God can do. And as we are all those things, may God fill us with his Holy Spirit and may we be the prophets of our generation. May we receive from God the truths and may we have the courage to share those truths with others. May this coming year be a blessed year for you and may God use you to glorify him through you and through your church. God bless you and hope to see you soon. Amen.